Ew. I feel I should have been in the car seat. You're fine. So now what? If you hear a scream, don't come and investigate. So, we're all in agreement we're going to be murdered here. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. Let's just get the bags out of the car in the morning. I'm too tired. I want to go to bed. I don't like it here. Hey, where's Spoon? I can't believe you left me at that rest stop. I came back for you, didn't I? Yeah, right. You were just chomping at the bits to leave me there stranded. It's chomp at the bit, not chomping at the bits. You can't talk to me like that. I right now. Let's just do what we came here to do before we get fucking murdered, okay? Man, this place sucks. They only have local channels. Get up on <laughs> Like they have public domain cartoons on three. Oh, I'm ready to stab myself in the eye with a rusted fork and watch that trash. What? Nothing, it's just. You really do belong in our group. Fine, uh, but I will remember this transgression. Do you have the summoning candles? Yup. What the hell are those? Candles. Those are badly operated. I told you to get wax black candles. Are you fu- This is a motel, and one that's probably haunted. We are not gonna bring this place down. They were supposed to be wax candles. It is 3 o'clock in the morning. We are not going to light real candles. Fine, but if we summon a stupid demon, it's on you. That's what I thought. Line them up along the front door, equally apart from one another. Yes, just like that. Turn them on. Hopefully you remember to put batteries in them. Is that good enough, your majesty? Your sarcasm is noted and discarded. Now it's time to summon. You may want to step back. The portal usually has a white burst. Oh, oh god, not another side character. Gosh, what has it been in like 700 years? At least. Well, you're looking good, real fit. Oh, thanks. Man, this place is still as gross as ever. Oh. Hey, you must be the human tethered to spoon. How about a hug, sugar tits? Oh, okay, not a hugger, got it. <laughs> you girls in your maze, you always have somewhere to go. Yeah, oh, yeah, just walk away. Man, she is very unpleasant. Tell me about it. I can hear you. We are in the same room. Right, well, let's get the sound away and give you all your two wishes. Hey, hang on. Ooh. Did you just say you're going to grant us two wishes each? That is correct. Anyone who's brave enough to stay here knows how to summon me do. I want that strawberry dress that was viral a few years ago. Oh, perfect, because you can use a little upgrade from that potato sack you're wearing. It's vintage. Vintage hideous is still hideous, honey. Now, usually the person who summons me gets to go first. It's only polite. Oh, well, I guess I see your icy stair point here. <gasps> is your second wish for some pretty shoe? And I want to go home. Easy enough. Later there. That goddamn turncoat bitch! How are you surprised? Yeah, we're about to do the same thing! Okay, who's next? <laughs> la, 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 la. Oh, do you like it?
do you think it will do? I am the queen of Halloween. Uh, what's that, loyal subject? Oh, thank you. I thought I lost this once again. And now that I am complete, let's rip this movie a new asshole. Clown Motel is a 2019 horror movie filmed at the world-famous Clown Motel in the tiny town of Tonopah, located in Nevada. It's bad. Like, bad, bad. Like, bad, 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 bad. It was partially financed through Kickstarter, where they offered small roles to those who pledged starting at $700. Or if you really wanted to throw money into a pit, you could shell out thousands to be a producer. Oh, and the Kickstarter credits Jeffrey Reddick with the creative story development, but he's only thanked in the credits, and this movie is nowhere on his IMDb that I could find, so make of that what you will. I do genuinely hope nobody had to go into their retirement savings for this. Some dreams are okay to crush parents. Director slash writer Joseph Kelly returns for his third feature film. This will be his most ambitious story to date. It meets Cabin in the Woods with a bloody splash of Devil's Rejects. How dare you compare this barely watchable garbage to Cabin in the Woods and It. That just makes me irrationally angry. Fuck you! And don't think I don't feel for the Devil's Rejects fans. While I personally do not like those movies, they do not deserve this comparison. I gotta say, I went to the Clown Motel on Friday 13th this year, and frankly, it was not worth it. Vegas had cool shit to do that was Halloween or horror themed year round, but why go to any of those places when you can drive through nothing for hours? I did get to see some beautiful birds though. In this gas station, I actually had to force myself to leave because there were all these overpriced stuffed animals I loved and wanted, but I easily would have blown like $200 if I stuck around. I will say though, because the town is so tiny, there's not a whole lot around and it gets super dark and creepy at night. On my way to pick up the car from the charging station down the main road, I did come across this garage that was closed, but it still had music playing loudly inside that I thought was genuinely creepy. Oh, but I'm pretty sure I was targeted for being mugged, so that was fun. I'm not kidding, by the way. Thanks, Tonopah. I will probably never, ever go back. <laughs> At least I got this little ant on the way back. Made the trip to and from Tonopah way less terrible. So without further ado, here's Clown Motel Spirits Arise. The movie opens with the body doubles of Dennis and Mac drinking in the desert when they're interrupted by, oh, of course you're in this movie. Ah, good old Jack from Beg himself. And this really obscure movie, I guess, he was in called Halloween, where he played The Shape. <sighs> what a stupid name for a movie monster. Is it true, though? That bastard better hope so. Hey guys, the key grip was in the shot. The key grip is actually Frank's son, Todd, and the four go to meet Frank's daughter, Hannah, who's target shooting. My kids, my precious antique kids. Oh, look what you've done to them. Quite an impressive pull to the left that bullet had, huh? I was just telling Paul and Carl about the gold mines. You mean the ones run by the clowns? They say that so casually as if it's not a ludicrous statement. The team make plans to meet someone called Drunk Willie just before walking away and we're hit in the face with the title. I don't understand why they shoved the title of the movie there unless it was more of a warning about the movie. The editor's like, are you sure you want to watch this movie you, just in case you forgot? It is called Clown Motel. It Right, um, <clears throat> what? I told you I'd talk about the movie. At no point did I say I would do it sober. You made us ride the horses all the way into the middle of nowhere to show us some freak show? Calling what we're currently looking at a freak show is a bit harsh. I mean, it's just a bunch of dorks who dropped acid. Is that Ari Lehman? Yup, we have both Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers in this movie for like a collective of four minutes. You know, I, I feel like we can thank our lucky stars that Tony Todd made it out of 2019 without being in this movie. That's a nice payday right there. So it is true. Let's just say I have my ways. 
That's the only explanation we're given to explain how this dude knew about any of this, because why bother putting any effort into the story? Do they even do anything with this gold? It looks like they're just playing with it. I, I doubt they have a clown accountant or a clown bank account. They have called us freaks! But we've built a place where we can live in peace, away from the, the hatred and evil. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, hey, uh, hey, Ari, I have a question. If you guys were trying to make a clown compound to get away from the, the real world and the normies, uh, wh why did you make a, why did you make a motel? Why did you make a sign pointing to the office of the hotel? Why do you have an open sign? Why are pets okay? <laughs> this is our world. So let's celebrate. Huzzah! Let's celebrate! I'd like to think that they do this shit every single day. <laughs> Maybe this is why you were rejected by the outside world? Gandalaya made a lily for silly lily. Thank you, Gandalaya. Silly Lily chastises Gandalaya for even thinking of going to the mines at night because it's dangerous. Which I second. Please, please don't go into abandoned mines. You will die. Or even worse, you'll become a part of a clown troop. You're my friend. If Daddy found out, he would punish you again. Daddy's a little busy back here, hun. The LSD's finally kicking in. And what the hell does this guy think he's doing? I'm sure they were going for like creepy staring, but to me, it looks like the poor actor froze with stage fright when he realized the camera was on. What am I doing in this movie? Silly Lily doesn't understand why they've been forced to hide in the desert while the world gets to go on without interruption and kind of makes a veiled we should genocide the normies comment. Their view shouldn't drive us out. We should drive them out. Which I kind of understand Lily here. I mean, if I had to do this shit every single day with my dad and his weird friends, I would also want to burn the world to ash. Hey, Ari, I don't want to bother your daily talking Lily down from committing war crimes, but we're running low on that cheese flavor for the popcorn. We still have caramel flavoring, and I like that one okay, but it's not really what I'm craving. I want savory right now. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Lily, here we live in peace. Clowns don't spill blood, Lily. Huh, I wonder how long they'll hold on to that conviction. I'm beginning to think none of these people were warned when they were filming. Let's dance! Come! Man, I really hope that they didn't film this in the dead of summer because Nevada can get pretty fucking hot. Good thing they have a modern Pepsi machine they draped a red blanket over half-assed, huh? And I waited until this very moment to inform you all that this opening is supposed to be taking place in the 1930s. I know, there were juggalos in the 30s. I'm as surprised as you are. Is that a modern car in the background they forgot to move or crop out of the shot? We'll wait until they all go to bed. Howdy, howdy. And then what? So instead of just waiting for the clowns to go to sleep and then just head down to the mine to steal whatever they can grab, they decide to burn the motel with the clowns in it as you do you know judging by how they were handling the gold they probably just have bags of it sitting in the office maybe even scattered on the floor also quite the jump to go from robbery to mass clown aside isn't it look i find them horribly annoying too but all they're doing is having a small icp convention they're not hurting anybody drunk willie betrays hannah and todd and torches them along with the clowns I mean, damn, who could have saw that coming? Man, if you can't trust the town drunken murderous thief, who can you trust? <laughs> Look at this masterpiece, barely reacting to being burned alive. Thank you, Joe Castro, for allowing these visuals to reach my eyes. <laughs> oh, come on, burning clowns isn't that funny. Burning and that's 8 minutes and 24 seconds. Nice job, Lily. You guys almost made it 10 minutes into the movie before reciting a curse to murder anyone who finds the motel. Honestly, I think they were just looking for an excuse to curse the lens. Wow, they are not even attempting to try and escape. They just resign themselves to death immediately. And before you say, oh, maybe Todd and Hannah jammed the doors or something, well, you'd have to show us that, huh? And that still wouldn't explain why they didn't go through the windows besides, you know, not having the budget to break anything. 
look, you can put as much fire and smoke after effects on the screen as you want. You're not hiding that they're all in the same room. Or maybe they were just taking turns looking panicked or sad in the front window. Well, now I know who to blame for this movie's existence. Joseph. It should be noted the person responsible for their death is never shown or mentioned in the movie ever again. You would think they would try to hunt down Willie, you know, the person who murdered them all, but they have more important people to hunt down. YouTubers. Welcome to our fifth episode of Haunted Earth. Hey, Chris. And it's our goofy ghost hunter, Ian. Ooh, oh, oh yippee. Gee willikers, well, golly. These fascinating gentlemen are Ian, Chris, and Spencer. And let's hope we won't hate them right out of the gate. <sighs> My ghost radar's going off. <laughs> well, I'm glad you said that. And it's not your gay radar. You may have to take a couple steps back. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Super funny joke. In 1997. You get the feeling Joseph Kelly is the type to tell a really unfunny, offensive joke. And when no one laughs, he tries to explain it. Or worse repeat the awful joke that's always fun too and they didn't even get the stupid outdated joke right to begin with it's gaydar not gay radar it's an ancient penny it appears to have the ancient souls trapped inside of it <laughs> okay admittedly i cannot do better special effects but why does the ghost look like that? Why is its head so tiny? Spencer notices the tiny head ghost which distracts him from filming. Such a shame too, he's missing out on such brilliantly written banter. Listen guys, we been out here for like three days now, but now we're at the point where we are making pennies be haunted. Besides, you know, filming a literal ghost, but it's never mentioned again in the movie, so it's fine. I mean, we do have enough footage for an episode. And if we want people to take us seriously, then we have to find the real shit. So these guys must have millions of subscribers if they're driving all over the US to film this shit, right? Oh, they mention the number of their subscribers and it makes even less sense when we find that out. I hear that Nevada has several great haunted places we could go check out. I guess it's off to Nevada from an undisclosed location in an RV and we get to watch this shit for 40 seconds. Oh, what's that? You don't think that's a long time? We'll try sitting through it. It's just shorter forever. Just get to the clown zombie barbecue, Jesus. If I wanted to watch an obnoxious idiot smoke weed and drink, I'd sit in front of a mirror. Oh. Right. By the way, these are three of our main characters. You're welcome. Moving on to Las Vegas, we meet the other four main characters, Kristen, Brooke, Casey, and Shannon. Shockingly, they're just about as annoying and unlikable as the guys. I'm getting my drink on tonight. Isn't it great that we don't get three terrible main characters, but seven? <laughs> We get a director slash writer cameo here as he's Brooke's fiance, Sergeant Kelly. Of course he made himself a sergeant. It's time to take care. Good girl out to become a little slutty. Wait, what? It's totally fine, babe. I trust you. Round two. So it's off to the Vegas Strip with their $15 cocktails and attending a Beauty and the Suffering concert? Yeah, sure movie. These women dressed up to go to a club very obviously totally went to this concert instead. The next morning, our bachelorette party is returning to California when they hit a patch of thick fog. They come out of the fog to find, oh, wow, that's... Wow. I guess it makes more sense to set the motel out in the middle of nowhere instead of Tonopah. Yes, I know it's a movie. Yes, I know they can set the clown motel anywhere in the world. My question is, is the movie implying it moved to trap bypassers or is it the same spot it burned down because they do come out of the mines, which is presumably still in the same spot. And if it's the latter, why would these clown people who hate the outside world and all the people in it build a motel on the side of a road? I don't remember that place on our way to Vegas. Me either. Which you wouldn't if you were traveling from LA to Vegas unless you were going well out of your way. The maps app isn't connecting. You are traveling on a straight road. Unless you're planning to go off-roading in your Toyota Camry, I think you'll be fine if you just keep following the fucking road. Even if we are lost, we're not staying in that freak motel. Ow! How do you get lost on a straight road? And it's like noon. Why would they stop? Just stopped at that last town for gas. 
sure we'll find something. No, no, you really should have stopped for gas. Because I found out that when traveling from Vegas between Betty and Tonopah, there's absolutely not one single gas station. And keep in mind, there is a whole ass town you drive through in between those two towns. Not an abandoned town. I saw people in open businesses. You know what they don't have? A gas station. Why do you not have a gas station? So, even though Shannon's makeup is flawless and there's no one around them and they've been driving down an almost deserted road, she decides right then and there that's the best time to take her eyes off the road to apply eyeliner, nearly causing an accident with the one other automobile on the road. We just avoided an accident in the middle of nowhere that could have been really bad, resulting in one or more of us needing immediate hospitalization, but whatever, I'm bored. I'm just gonna stare blankly at the camera. What happened? Almost got hit by a car full of chicks. Probably come from a feminist rally or something. <laughs> hey. Well, I'm glad Mr. Director held on that shot. No doubt waiting for all the laughter to simmer down after that hilarious joke. He does this with all of his terrible, terrible jokes. The losers can't get a signal either, and after exiting the fog, see the Clown Motel too. Oh look, the Pepsi machine from the 1930s is still there. That's pretty cool. Hey, 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 Pepsi might have an alarming amount of carcinogenic chemicals in it, but it does not want to be associated with this movie. Screw all the other places, this is it. Look at that cemetery, bro. That shit looks old as hell. So fun fact, the Clown Motel does indeed have a cemetery right next to it. A lot of the bodies were from the Belmont Mine Fire in 1911. One of those graves belonged to the father of the founders of the Clown Motel. Oh, check it out, the Clowns House Satellite TV. How'd they get the dish guy out there? And was it before or after the fire? <laughs> By the way, that room right there is where I stayed. Except when I was there a couple weeks ago, they were doing upgrades. So instead of the cemetery, I got to look at a wood panel. What the hell is a cemetery doing out here all the way in the middle of nowhere, though? It's uh, for all the customers that come in and die. The boys, unfazed by this observation, walk into the office to book a room for the night. They call out for someone but receive no answer. Oh, what am I thinking? Hey, let's start the web show. You and I both know that they're talking about YouTube, so I'm just gonna say YouTube. Stop touching me, you guys. Good, stop it. Riveting. Returning to the ladies, somehow getting turned around on a straight road, they end up back at the clown motel. Yes, I know it's clown magic. I just think getting lost on a straight road is hysterical. Huh, they forgot to Photoshop in the RV. Look, there's someone else here. Just come in with us. Hell no, have you bitches not seen it? Yeah, and frankly, I wish I was watching that. Clowns. Hmm, this could be kinky. Now, I'm not sure if you picked up on it because Kelly's writing is so subtle, but that one, that one's the slutty one. I know, I know. The four go into the office and the guy, somehow not seeing the women drive up, get out of their car and walk to the office, automatically assume their staff and comedy hijinks ensue. You actually think that we work here? I mean, aren't you two the desk clerks? Do I look like a desk clerk? Why would you think we work here? Do we look poor to you or something? We're gonna be rude to you over this honest mistake, even though you weren't rude in the slightest when asking for a room, because how dare you assume I work at a motel? So I take it you ladies don't work here. What fucking tipped you off? Oh good, the Clown Motel from the 30s also has a modern HDTV. And uh, where are you heading? Los Angeles. Ooh, they've got some great weed over there. <laughs> the state would probably go in debt with all these people wanting food <laughs> stamps <laughs> now. Oh, craving, craving their munchies! It just, it just never ends. Each line is worse than the previous. There's one room, I say we get the key and uh, check in. Great idea. You guys have an RV! There's no other key? You guys have an R... Never mind. The guys invite the girls to share the room, which they agree for some reason, and they play King's Cup well into the night. Oh yeah, they're really selling this abandoned haunted motel that won't let them leave by showing the sign for the Tonopah Cemetery and the goddamn sign for the fucking motel lit up. Well, good news, guys. The zombie clowns have clean rooms and are okay with you bringing your pets. How considerate of them. The girls are beating the boys' asses in King's Cup, and if you thought they were annoying sober, get a load of them plastered. Here is nice brownie for you. Oh, no, I, I don't like chocolate. No, 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 there's a special surprise. Uh, don't put that in your mouth. He's trying to tell you there's weed inside that brownie. Shh. Okay, that's considerably less upsetting than I thought it was going to be, but still. Hmm. Shannon and Kristen leave for the front office while we're stuck with these remaining assholes. <laughs> He wants to know if you two are getting married. 
God, this is the stupidest question. Have they never met a gay couple before? Or maybe they had hoped Casey and Brooke would make out for them, because lesbians are always looking for chances to make out in front of dudes who shower maybe once a week, right? She's not my type, so. Hey! <laughs> Oh, you think that's funny? Oh. Yeah, I do. Ah! Do guys actually find pillow fights between women erotic? Like, I hate to break the fantasy, but that shit gets serious real quick. It goes from giggling to, bitch, I'll fucking end you the minute you hit someone too hard once. Hello? I'm horny. He just left the room with the drunk cute boys, and now you bring that up. Wow, you guys really are drunk. You know... I always wondered what it would be like to be the guy who was like 40. You mean a guy four years older than you? Ooh, scandalous. The girls return to the motel room. Oh God, please knock it off and inform everyone there's still no one at checkout. Well, you girls can stay here if you want and offer the girls the beds while we sleep on the um, floor. Or, you know, Kristen cleans up the beer bottles and in the process finds an old diary from the 70s. We have found this rundown motel. Hopefully after a night of getting well rested, we can find the Clifton family of four over and out Jane Doe. So this detective wrote a diary, but they signed it Jane Doe. Either Joseph Kelly did not want to come up with another person's name or you thought this was clever? Jane Doe goes on to write that her and her partner's car won't start. They've been stuck at the motel for days and nothing has been going right since her partner backed into one of the clown cases. What is it? Journal. An old customer must have forgot to pack it. Oh, all right. After everybody finally passes out, Casey wakes up to the sound of heavy footsteps. Something's out there. It's probably just the wind. The wind that sounds like footsteps. Well, that was kind of weird. I think I saw clowns. There's nobody out there. You're probably just a little high. I mean, at least she just goes and looks out the window instead of wandering around outside. Casey goes to cool off in the shower and finds Ian, and they, um, they just get to banging. What the hell? No, no, don't fight it, mommy. Don't, don't fight it, mommy. The group wake up the next day and Shannon finds an ominous message written in paint on the window. Actually, I think it's supposed to be Ian's blood. Uh, just whatever. What's up with the ketchup? Their friend. He likes to add something to their little ghost hunting videos. We have almost 200 subscribers. Time out. They've been driving around for at least three days recording for a YouTube channel that has almost 200 subscribers. And a total of 6,000 views. I once got 4 million views on a late night special I did. She's the slutty one, guys. Don't forget. Wait, don't you want to stay and do at least a few hours of ghost hunting with us? It was hard enough hunting for your dick. I mean, normally I'd feel bad because she just did him dirty, but it's Ian, so... Ah! <laughs> what? Dude, she had the cold water running! The girls find all four car tires slashed and return to the room, thinking Ian is responsible. Whoops, somebody on the crew bought a Pepsi and forgot to cover it again. This is another scene that could have been cropped easily to hide that. Tell. Oh! <laughs> what are you talking about? I was in the room all night! It's unfortunately true. Get this crazy bitch out of here, okay? Crazy? Yeah, you're fucking crazy. Casey just said Ian was in the room all night. She was with him. I'm glad the female characters are just as fucking stupid as male ones. Whoa. No, 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 no. This, this came from the inside. Wow, something that's actually kind of creepy in this movie. I wonder how they'll eventually ruin it. You're bleeding. What the fuck is that? I don't know. I can't see what it is. And I guess Ian didn't feel it until the camera saw it. So with the RV out of gas and all the tires slashed on the Toyota, they're basically stuck. I have a five gallon container in my trunk. Is it a good idea to have a full gas can in your trunk in the middle of summer? It's not starting. What the hell? What happened to the battery? Wow, the zombie ghosts really think of everything, don't they? And, you know, I'm not suggesting that they walk because that would be really unwise. But if you're in danger, maybe drive on the flat tires. I mean, you'll absolutely destroy your rims, but that's better than being butchered, right? I'm gonna go take their car battery and put it in my RV and that we can get rolling. 
I would mock that, but I have no idea if that would work. So car people, you're going to have to enlighten me. Spencer decides now is the perfect opportunity to film for their YouTube channel. And we get a semi creepy scene of ghosts appearing and disappearing from the footage in the background. While Chris takes the battery from Shannon's car and puts it in the RV, Spencer's ghost meter thing starts to beep. So of course he wanders off alone without telling anyone where he's going or what he's doing and enters one of the rooms to see this. All right, setting aside how asinine this scene is, as far as Spencer knows, this is just another person staying at the motel that he walked in on while filming and didn't immediately leave when he realized what was happening. No, I want to see where he's going with this. What exactly did he think the outcome would be? Because either you just barge into a stranger's room while filming them, or you've loudly made your presence known to a stranger who is possibly responsible for the message on the window. I'd also like to add that this could have been a terrifying and disgusting scene, but all it did was made me realize a few things. Number one, Mr. Director has seen high tension, and two, we know Mr. Director slash writer can't write and has the sense of humor of a middle school boy who kills small animals. So we all absolutely know where this scene is gonna go. Well, 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 what do we have here? Maybe give the ghost clown zombie thing with the party hat nipples who we just saw humping a I don't even know what the fuck that is. A deeper and more intimidating voice instead of this actor's normal speaking voice, especially if you were gonna go for demonic or whatever. Well, well, well. What do we have here? Is uh, Spencer here? Not since you two lovebirds left. We took your battery and put it in the RV. I swear to God, if you don't have my car fixed by morning! What does this idiot expect Chris to do? Pull new tires out of his ass? Great idea being needlessly confrontational to the one person actually trying to actively get you out of a potentially dangerous situation. I think that wig is cutting oxygen off to her brain. Ian realizes being outside in the open with his fleshy neck exposed is better than staying in the motel room with people who are somehow more annoying than he and his friends and goes outside to help Chris by supervising, I guess. Can you go upstairs to his gear bag and grab some clamps? I'm having a hard time tightening these down. God, for the past 15 minutes, this movie has just been us watching people walking back and forth from a hotel room to a car and back again. It's like watching someone play a fetch quest in a video game you're not interested in. Hey, by the way, you know that, that one that looks like Velma? She's probably the craziest one of the bunch, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Chris, why are you standing perfectly still with the jumper cables around your neck and blood pulling out your feet? Chris? <gasps> the ladies prove themselves to be extremely useless and evil and lock Ian out of the room. Then spend the time it would have taken to get Ian into the room, arguing about whether or not to let him into the room that has no other exits. Brooke, no! Did you fucking see what that clown just did to him? No, and neither did you. You are on the far end of the motel on the second floor. Just because the camera saw it doesn't mean the character saw it, Joseph. Tommy! Tommy! Ah! Ah! Ooh, damn, the Mormons are getting aggressive. You know, if you would have just let him in when he first reached the door, the door would have already been closed and locked, and none of you would be fighting Emmett Kelly right now. Aw, he looks so hurt they wouldn't let him disembowel them. <laughs> He's kicking the dirt in front of him. He's like, well, gee willikers, all I wanted to do was cut your still beating heart out of your chest and let my weird friend fuck it. <laughs> Whatever ghost shit you brought here, it's a reality now. Welcome to the real world, bitch. This has got to be the stupidest character I have ever seen in a horror movie that's not written to be stupid. Why does she think the guys have anything to do with what's currently going on? Her anger doesn't make sense, nor do her actions. It's like Kelly wanted to write an angry bad bitch character, but didn't know how to write that, so she's just angry and yelling. I can't even really call her unlikable. She's just a nightmare for both the characters and us. Where do you think you're going? He's just lying on his back making gurgling noises. Why wouldn't you just show Chris trying to crawl away to make that line make sense? Emmett Kelly, stung by B, sees Chris still alive and kindly puts him out of his misery by shoving a windshield wiper down his throat. <coughs> what is this acting choice? He looks baffled by everything these characters do. Or maybe he's just confused by the obvious tube in this actor's mouth squirting the blood out. Anything? Why would a cell phone make the landline off the hook sound? You had to add that in post! Why is everything in this movie so ridiculous? The girls take a lesson from Birdemic and lean one of the mattresses against the window, then stare at Emma Kelly, who I guess just forgot they existed. 
Uh huh. It wasn't until this clown got into better light that I realized he was supposed to be a pig. So I guess he's gonna be Miss Piggy from now on. Or John Wayne Gacy. Because I'm pretty sure that's what he's supposed to be a reference to. Spencer sees Chris dead, and this is genuinely the only scene I felt was done okay, though it probably would have been more effective if it were at night. Specifically because the actor playing Spencer does convincingly act terrified here, which he probably was because I'm not 100% convinced that was a prop hand axe. If you go out there, we're not letting you back in. Holy shit, these people are monsters. If they were hiding, I could possibly understand them not wanting Ian to give away their location, but the clowns know they're in that room. They will eventually get to them, and as far as we know, there's trap doors to get into that room. And fuck them for stopping Ian trying to save his best friend. If these bitches tried to stop me from saving my best friend, literally every single one of them would look like Angelica's doll Cynthia because I'd be ripping chunks out of their skulls until they let me through. Kinda feel like I'd take my chances with the killer clowns over people who'd probably trip me to save themselves. I'm sorry, Ian, but he's gone. No! No, he's not! He was injured, but he's still very much alive! Once again, in the time they took to be selfish pricks, they could have distracted Miss Piggy and Emmett Kelly long enough to get Spencer away from them, but instead... Did I miss the show? What I have gathered from this stupid movie's plot is that every time one of these zombie ghost clown things kills somebody, one of them gets their soul back. It's like an exchange thing. But they're the ones who created this curse. They cursed themselves. Or I guess Silly Lily actually did, but it seems awfully convoluted and relies on a lot of variables that would cause the curse to fail, resulting in them just being soulless husks for eternity. Now that I'm talking about it, I just realized it's never explained why Silly Lily knew about this curse, nor how she had the ability to invoke what's basically a magic spell. Maybe if it were at least hinted that they had magic powers, or at least Silly Lily did, it would explain that along with why Ari and Lily needed to have that daily talking down from genocide. Clowns don't spill blood, Lily. <laughs> Sorry we're such awful people and have done nothing but insult and belittle you and your now dead friends even though you were all trying to help us get out of here and given the first chance we'll betray you and leave you to die. You should go take a shower so we can form a plan to use you as bait. I got it! Oh, well. Thank you, movie. Of course, that's just Brooke's weird fantasy. They don't actually abandon him, but it's still terrible because you know this was their original plan and the only reason they don't go through with it is because Brooke knows all these dumbasses will get killed. Wait, that extra looks like he's in a ninja costume. Well, why can't we watch that movie, Clown Ninja? Though it would probably be hard sneaking up on anybody with those big squeaky shoes. Like I've said countless times before, in a horror movie with supernatural antagonists, the most important thing is the monster. The main thing that really bothers me about these clown zombie ghosts whatever, besides them existing, is that they don't look damaged at all. I would be so much more forgiving of this movie had the clowns looked horribly burned or disfigured. I know the movie is low budget, but practical effect makeup can be done on a budget if you hire a makeup artist who knows what they're doing. It would be a much better juxtaposition seeing the clowns as happy, dancing doofuses they were, in contrast to the burned, pain-filled apparitions they become. Sorry, I got distracted by what the clowns look like. I didn't quite notice what they were doing. What is happening right now? Why are the clowns just walking around in the cemetery? Them just existing in a graveyard isn't exactly scary, Mr. Director slash writer. Oh nice, this place has free range clowns. Ian continues his four hour shower when the acid kicks in. This filter is so annoying and literally gave me a headache because it lasted for too long and God forbid any scene be cut down. I'm also not sure how a seizure inducing filter explained the plot to Ian, but the sooner this movie can drag itself across the finish line, the better. <coughs> I think we just have to stay the night. Do they not hear Ian losing his shit in the bathroom right now? Or do they just not care? Oh, why am I asking? Of course these chicks don't care. There's something else going on here and I can feel it. It took two of your friends dying for you to figure that out. I would like all the characters to die now, movie. You teased us with it earlier, so do it now. 
Chris always talked about getting a nine. Do you see what I mean about the makeup? He just looks like a fucking juggalo. That's it. <sighs> I thought he'd have it hidden somewhere. We just established that these clowns aren't human, but a gun will work on them because... We should try and get some rest. Well, someone should stay awake though, right? Oh, don't volunteer all at once. God forbid any of you lose any minute of sleep. These people. In the fires outside. Did she not see that? She didn't react to it or flinch or anything. So I guess it's just for us to enjoy. It is so gross when hack writers add sexual assault to their shitty script because they're too inept to add real dread or fear. Why do that when you can add a rape scene that doesn't belong and adds nothing to the story? And don't think for a second, Mr. Director, I didn't notice what you were trying to get away with by having one of the male characters go through that instead of one of the female characters. It doesn't matter the gender of the victim, it's just as gross and you should be ashamed of yourself. I think you were right. I watched the tape. Did she call you? Did she say? Seven days. <laughs> you stayed up all night to protect us against murderous clowns and now I'm making a reference to a much, much better movie because you said something about a tape. I'm the funny one in the group. We were all clowns in it and Spencer was getting butt fucked by a clown. Whoa, way to bury the lead, Brooke. And she just referred to Spencer being sexually assaulted as butt fucked. That is a term I have not heard since about 2002. And even then, nobody over the age of 14 said it. And instead of this being a horrifying discovery after witnessing Spencer's murder, Ian makes a joke about it. Yeah, sounds like Spencer. Remember, Spencer could have potentially been rescued had not every single one of these people been selfish, useless ghouls. I cannot believe someone wrote this script, other people read it, and thought, huh, this should be a movie, and not, huh, we should throw this in a pyre, along with the director slash writer. Oh look guys, the tires on the Toyota are magically fixed, and I guess that bite or whatever it was on Ian's back isn't a problem anymore. Yeah, did you forget about that injury? Cause so did the movie. I have never seen an adult struggle so much with a couple Mylar balloons before. Who do you think maintains the flowers and bushes when they're not hunting down people to kill? You know, I hate to say it, but I think the girls were right staying in the motel room. These clowns seem to have trouble with doors and windows. I mean, they couldn't figure out open door or break window to save themselves from burning to death, so them not grasping the concept of doors and windows tracks. No, no, there's it's the same amount of guys. It just they're spread out a little bit, so I can see how that would be confusing for you. Leave us the fuck alone! No idea, but you'll be surprised to learn it's never explained. I found Mason's body in a mine past the cemetery. Hopefully that ladder will hold. <laughs> Are we to believe that this detective, Jane Doe, was like writing in this journal as she was trying to crawl up the ladder until it fell and she stopped writing? Because that's, that's kind of what it sounds like, honestly. <laughs> Ooh, be careful, guys. Otherwise, you'll lose your deposit. Get out of there now. It's a rental that needs to be back by four. The morons finally think to start looking for weapons, or I don't know, that gun mentioned earlier. Then they come across a dildo. Oh, like you've never used one before. <sighs> all these years, who would've thought? Am I the only one that's really weirded out and confused as to why Spencer's sexuality is still being used for comedy after he found out that he was sexually assaulted and murdered by John Wayne Gacy? It's time to change some nuts. Some lug nuts. Okay, listen. When she said that, I genuinely thought that they were going to take the goddamn wheels off the RV and put them on the Toyota. And I was like, just drive on the fucking rims! Nope, that's not their plan, but they do come up with an equally stupid plan. I think we need to make it past the cemetery to end this. There's a mine. I think Kristen's right. Man, they are really relying on this journal written by a detective who vaguely described a mine. Fuck, I wish Hulk Hogan was here. Who the fuck is Hulk Hogan? Chill, Kristen. Yeah, it was a stupid joke, but it did not warrant that reaction. And who the hell does not know who Hulk Hogan is? 
Since they've all made such brilliant decisions up to this point, they all take a piece of an edible to eat because why be sober when you can be high as shit while walking through an abandoned mine? Eventually, the clowns figure out they can just make a breaking glass sound effect off screen and a smoke bomb will appear to chase them out of the RV. So of course, they just sit there. They don't cough or cover their mouths or make any indication the smoke filling the RV is hazardous in any way, but they still bail to fight. And it goes about as well as you would expect. Fucker. My turn, fucker. No, my turn. Did this bitch just hit me with a sex toy? Was this supposed to be funny? I was in Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't need this shit. Um, did the other clowns go on break? <laughs> You like a good job, don't you? Duh. Brooke manages to kill one of the clowns. I thought they were already dead, which causes a slight earthquake. Then, despite the plan they put together three minutes ago, Shannon and Casey, whose stab wound is just a mild nuisance, I guess, run into the office while the others head through the cemetery. No! Well, I tried. There is literally no reason why these two can't leave the office and just follow Brooke and the others. The clowns still there are barely walking. Once in the office, Casey remembers she has a wound that probably should be hurting, so Shannon applies the worst first aid I've ever seen in a movie. No attempt to clean the wounds whatsoever, just shove dirty napkins in it, I guess. You think we should have went with the others? Only time will tell. I mean, I don't really care either way, and this wig is super itchy, and I'm definitely not putting this movie on my IMDb page, direct eye contact with director. The others wander aimlessly through the desert until they stumble upon a cave. Not a mine, like Kristen said earlier. I know this might sound crazy, but I think we need to make it past the cemetery to end this. There's a mine there. What? A cave? Does the director think that mines and caves are the same? That they're not... Okay, and then what? Okay, so the town must be cursed. We have to figure out how. God. What town? This is a clown motel. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Clown compound that magically appeared on the side of the road. But that barricaded room at the clown motel would save my ass more than some stupid shit book. Oh, yeah? Yeah? Like the room you guys were in earlier when you all said that you need to escape, otherwise you were all gonna die? Like the room that had no food or another exit if the clowns managed to make the door breaking off camera sound to get into the room? I think you're right. I think we're trapped. I'm sorry, but magic or not, I refuse to believe that these clown dorks, A, managed to catch up with them and B, snuck up on them without any of them noticing. Bye, Ian. We were always planning on sacrificing you because we're awful. Actually, you know who never makes another appearance here? Lily. Yeah, silly Lily, the little girl who started the whole curse. You'd think her dad would make mention of her, but nope. Just another thing they never bother to explain. Yeah! Ian tucks his arms behind his back under his shirt, then runs towards a rock headfirst and kills himself. Then the clowns turn on Gondolaya over Ian's suicide, which... Why? It, just, it makes no sense, and now they're down a clown. Ugh. Oh, and then one of the clowns shits on Gondolaya because the writer thinks it's funny. I guess it's nice somebody does. Oh, shit. <laughs> the two run into a room literally one room away from the office and push a small light chair against the door so they're totally safe. I'm starting to think that these clowns only prey on people who are exceptionally stupider than they are. They left. Good. Who's they? You ran from one clown who did not follow you, and the others went after your friends. Maybe you should put that money into some booby pants, you stupid black fuck! <gasps> it was a wig this whole time? Actually, I'm kind of surprised the movie remembered that. Out of all things to remember. This leads to a yelling fight, because when you're supposed to be in hiding from someone trying to murder you, that's the best time to get into a loud, petty, physical fight. What? You can't frame me, bitch! I forgot how fun Ari can be when the movies that he's in just let him be Ari. He's been in some really bad movies, but so long as he gets to have fun in his role, Ari is very rarely the worst part of the movies he's in. And he was in Slutty the Clown. Why does that movie ring a bell? You must respect testicles! Ari, Ari, we said cut. Ari. Ari, oh god, it's been like 10 minutes. Ari. Oh, I just remembered why we usually keep Ari on a short leash in these type of movies. Oh, and is anyone even remotely surprised Casey makes no attempt to save Shannon? 
Kristen and Brooke make it to the entrance and then are shocked that there's no escalator in this abandoned mine cave. Weird. This cave mine that's supposed to be haunted by murderous zombie clowns seems to be a popular hangout for the local teens to tag. That raises some questions. Brooke hears footsteps and the two hide from a zombie clown who luckily for them has no peripheral vision. Ian, no one deserves to die like this. Um, who's Rob? And she is way more upset about Ian's death than Shannon's, huh? Oh, it's nice that this flashlight from the 1970s still has working batteries. In the last entry in the diary, she talks about going to the mine with a book. I just realized they never questioned how Kristen knew about the cave mine when she suggested it, and she hid it from everyone until now. For no reason except plot convenience. <laughs> how do these dorks keep sneaking up on these idiots? Oh, I think I just answered my own question. That was Casey! Kristen! Of course. I love how damn near every single character either hesitates or flat out does not help their friends when they're being attacked. Hell, I'd burn that place down a second time if my friend got a paper cut while looking through the reception desk. I just really want it to burn down again. <laughs> Eating some fish tacos. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Don't you fucking dare, you all! This dialogue is so painfully bad. I can feel my spine trying to shake loose from my back every time one of these middle school lines exit one of these characters' mouths. <laughs> They are not human, and they murdered more than half of you guys. Why are you acting so disturbed? Wait, where is Shannon? I tried. I really, really tried. You sure did. Brooke, I'm staying behind. What are you talking about? I love you. This comes right the fuck out of nowhere, and she's in love with her best friend who's marrying someone else, so she's cool with dying? Casey, honey, being heartbroken hurts, but you know what hurts worse? Uh, being chased down and murdered by a bunch of bargain bin clowns. Well, it doesn't matter either way because she's immediately killed. Wow, and I thought Ian's death was the most ridiculous one in this, and then we get this Looney Tunes shit. Oh look, the clown from the 1930s has New Balance shoes. Weird, I thought he'd be wearing clown shoes. Oh, well. <laughs> of course Brooke just leaves her. I, I guess I can't blame her because nobody in this movie is worth saving. Brooke finds a modern ladder in this abandoned mine cave from the 30s when Methy the Clown catches up, ripping off her shirt because the director is two 13-year-old boys in a trench coat who wanted to see boobs. Brooke waves her foot in the general direction of Methy, which somehow hits his head and he releases Brooke and dies, maybe. I don't care. And we see the ladder just leads back to the motel, making that whole last half hour pointless. Where the hell have these people been the whole time? And hey, those two died. If they could just come back, then what was the point of this scene? And I guess all is forgiven for Emmett Kelly shitting on Gondolaya, huh? Or was it a real awkward moment in the office for those three? Oh, the murderous killer clowns want us to know they support the local schools. Go muckers, am I right? <laughs> Jane? How would she know who that is? She did she see the flashbacks too? How has Jane stayed alive this long? Is having the slightest amount of sense in this movie too much to ask? Maybe this is a reveal that she's supposed to be a clown? I mean, I can't really tell. She doesn't look like one. Especially not like the others. Maybe it's like sickly makeup? I, I don't know. The discovery of Jane Doe makes Brooke realize no one escapes the Clown Motel and it just ends and we get to hear the hit song, The Clown Motel, which you have to sit through so you can see this wonderful post credit scene that cuts off at the ending on my copy. <laughs> just spectacular in every way. I'm so glad I sat through this incoherent nightmare. I have not the words to describe how awful this movie is, but I will try. 
Like, everything about this movie just feels like it's against my will. All the characters talk alike, so the women sound like dude bros, and every single character is horribly selfish and stupid. Nothing about their relationships seem genuine. At no point do these dork-ass clowns invoke the feeling of dread. And the whole movie takes place in the daylight, so we really get a good look at how not scary these clowns are. The story doesn't make any sense, the clown's motivation doesn't make any sense, and sometimes they actively work against their best interests. It was gonna be an uphill battle writing a horror movie about the infamous clown motel, but Joseph Kelly didn't even try to scale that hill. He just sat at the bottom writing this garbage in his own shit. That's funny, right? Poop! It's the height of comedy! <laughs> what? You can't frame me, bitch! Well, at least I got my fancy dress, the condo's quiet for the first time in months, and I'm gonna go polish off this bottle of wine. And pretend like there isn't a sequel to this movie. Come to the shady lady bed and breakfast where it's only a 40% chance you'll be murdered by our resident Leatherface.